Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. No problem. I, uh... I'm not great with flying. But these little shuttles... are the worst, but... Here's a tip. Don't close your eyes. You'd think that would make it easier, but it only makes it worse. Look out the window, pick a star, and just focus on that. I'll give it a try. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my... My first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Jara to step in at the 11th hour like this. If she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the exo this ship needs right now. Starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class, I, I mean all time, in the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough, but you know, I set my mind to it and it paid off. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You 
You finished in what? Like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. The pleasure is mine, Ensign... Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a Bolian, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Are you all right? Yeah, I I'm just... Well, I'm not sure where my departure dock is. The Resolute's gonna leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Huh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Thanks so much, Commander. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydak. I'm Commander Jan Ermat, operations officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was perfectly fine. No trouble at all. I'm glad to hear it. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. What exactly have you heard about me? First in your class at the Academy. Received the Starfleet Award of Valor during the Dominion War. Most recently, Tactical Officer and Chief of Security on the USS Endeavor. You've done your homework. Like I said, we're very lucky. The USS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half venting plasma fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. That's what it means to be a crew. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. It's been six months. What's the attitude among the crew now? Unsettled. But I hope that a new mission will help them move forward. If not, move on. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solano for quite some time. And I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. 
But I should warn you that when the captain announced you would be the new first officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. that. I thought the thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Millie. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. These are heavier than they look. Makes more sense than zero G. You're welcome. So clean I can see myself. Carter Diaz! Then you know what? Not half bad. Engineering. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. You and me working together? We can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. Looks like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. 
We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edzelar on repeated occasions. Well, Commander Chovak, isn't it true that if we were almost late, it categorically means that we were not late? That is correct, Mr. Diaz. I mean, if anything, Edsalar and I are following the schedule to the letter. Yes. Perhaps I should adjust the schedule accordingly. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. How concerned should we be about the storm? Uh, are you worried? Vulcans do not worry. We calculate the variables and take appropriate precautions to mitigate the risk. Right now, that entails making critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chobok. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chobok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. You won't get an argument from me, Nilly. It sure seems like everyone's still scrambling. And I get it. When has a relaunch ever gone off without a hitch? But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. Huh. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. They seem all right. Something that happened six months ago while they were off on another ship? Well, that's nothing to hold against them. Yeah, you're right. I guess getting a little new blood on board doesn't hurt. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. Don't talk badly about one of the best ships in all of Starfleet. We've rebuilt enough of her by now. She better be one of the best. We'll see about that, but I am glad to be here. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls.
Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobleons. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Doridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the Replicator. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. We'll be out there soon. Going where no one has gone before. Just a sip of something. Decisions, decisions. Coffee. Perfect temperature. Don't know how they do it. Jara Rydeck. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. The only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. You've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. I assume you mean the accident. That's right. The tragic accident, really. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there, within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. It was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True, but as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. And I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, 
I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission? I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. But are we prepared to embark on the mission? As much as I'd like to think that's true, I have my doubts. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying, you have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydek, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time, and I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. But you definitely set a standard to strive for. I don't know what to say. That's incredibly flattering, thank you. I hope someday I can follow in your footsteps. I'm sure you will. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. 
Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. I have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Operations. Staffing. Supplies. There's a lot to keep track of on a starship. Good thing we have Commander Ermont. The Helm. The Resolute is a refitted Centaur class, meaning it's capable of quick maneuvers. Can't wait to see what she can do. Science Station. The Resolute is a science vessel, primarily. Might explain Commander Westbrook's attitude. I'll have to speak with him later. The first officer seat. My seat. Right now, though, I need to fill in for Captain Solano. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. Storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am one, man. And so are you wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Beginning recalibration. and harmonics will deflect the alignment. Looks good. That wasn't so hard. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. 
Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Hey, we just met. You might like me after you get to know me. They say familiarity breeds contempt. But who knows? Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. On screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time. Red alert. Aye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Bedrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by, I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood, on my command. Raise shields! This is it! All hands, brace for impact! supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Can blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator.
We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute, the failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? What if the discharge is coalesced? It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. So we gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but, you know. flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chobot can... Coming down. 
All vibrations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking for the we safest way We have people way on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? We're going to blow the bolts. Starbase, stand by. We'll warn our crew to take cover. Get it done, Rydek. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, you have more micro debris incoming. Find cover. Cover? Nilly! Get under the access panel. It's armored with duranium. But what about you? Carter, maybe we can both fit behind this. There's no way. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. I'm 
I'm at the auxiliary hatch. Here, let me help you. Medical, we've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. We'll see you at sick bay. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? The Resolute suffered damage from the exploding bolts. But we've successfully moored to the station. The ship is secure. Our systems are coming back online, but we have a fair amount of repairs before we're ready to go. Put a halt on the roll-off of Starbase Engineering staff. We have a schedule to keep. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. What a debacle. I was caught with my pants down. Not even on my own ship when the wave hit. I had to go running out of the Starbase Commander's office just to... <sighs> but you followed my order. I appreciate that. Hell, I'm relieved. You're the captain of this ship. You give orders, and I'll execute them. That's right. But you see my problem, don't you? They... they were all against me on that bridge. And they were ready to go against my orders. I'm not blind to it. I don't speak for anyone else. But you know I'm in your corner. You're my captain, and I'll stand behind you. Well, it takes more than the two of us to run this ship, unfortunately. Drink? Sure. Thank you. Your predecessor, Commander Sutherland is missed. 
but for all the adoration of the crew, including the senior staff. I just couldn't rely on him. He would question, undermine me in front of the crew. I sometimes think they still hear his voice. That sort of thing is a way of lingering. And you can't argue with a ghost. Captain, perhaps you and the crew would be better served if you look at this mission as a fresh start. You can never really leave the past behind. If we don't, you can never move forward. Now, this won't be easy. But I'm glad to have you here with me. Glad to be here, Captain. And despite it all, we've got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I, uh... You don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go.
Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on her, but she'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. I don't like the attention it brings. Being treated differently than everyone else. But you are different. That's not something you can change. True. But sometimes it makes it even more difficult than it already is. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. The breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? To make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. I have to admit, I was concerned when I heard what happened on the bridge. You just followed Solano's orders despite having better options in front of you. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried, on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better, thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me, I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier, with the shields. And I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Complete the diagnostic sequence, and this shuttle will be cleared for service. Yes, sir. The storm in the Hotari region will interfere with our transporters. So we need all available shuttlecraft in working order. Excuse me, Commander Chobok. Petty Officer Maris. I will leave you to your work. I stopped by sickbay and saw Nilly. I figured you'd want to know. Did the doc get her fixed up? She's stable. But there's something about the storm's radiation that's making it hard to heal the energy lines. That doesn't sound good. She's toughing it out. Dr. Duval said she'll be back on duty soon, though. 
Come on. I have to run the final diagnostic. I can't stay long. I've got a long to-do list before we get to Hotari, and things are piling on faster than I can check them off. We're making all our last-minute checks in security, too. Tactical and security are short-staffed. Well, nothing's ever 100%, but we'll be good to go. And if you wait until you are ready, it's probably too late. Which is why I didn't want to wait for just the right time. I had a chance to think about this while I was away. Then you and Nui almost got killed out on the hall. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. Now, this is just a guess, but you like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? Must have been pretty obvious. Which is funny, because... Kinda came out of nowhere for me, at first. Well, you know... I was hoping. I guess that makes this a little easier to say. We've been really good friends for a long time. I wanna see if there's more between us... ...than just being friends. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me... <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just said yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure I heard that right. These are... uncharted territories. I'd call it a chemistry experiment. You know, with us. I'm just really glad that you said something. I've seen how you operate. I couldn't wait for you to make the first move. I'm glad, too. So whatever happens next is great with me. Level 1 diagnostic complete. I have to get back to that to-do list. They're probably looking for me. Can't blame him. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydek, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. It won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation.
that's gonna take out the shuttle. The the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Ryder, plot an intercept course. On it. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17. 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. Shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock. Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Well, let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer... Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, if I may say so. You're very welcome, sir. I'm glad we could get you here in one piece. Indeed. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems, and who knows what it might do to a warp drive. Yes, it would seem further investigation is called for. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. 
Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the Ionic interference. Hmm. Have the Illidians retaliated against the Hotari? Or taken any action against them? Surprisingly, they have not yet responded in kind. They were open to a Federation presence. But it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Illidian fleet in open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. That is correct. We can call it profitable or mutually beneficial, but at the end of the day, the Hotari are still being exploited for their own resources. True peace is not merely the absence of war. And as such, this conflict will surely come again. Neither the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation. So we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. We could use that as leverage with the Illidians. They'll want the Federation to continue buying from them. There might be something to that, Commander. Putting that on the table could make the Hotari more hostile. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that, considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle. We have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But they have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. That may answer why the Hotari were able to strike back after so long. They finally had an opportunity, and they took it. That would also explain the Illidians' restraint. And reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage of our own. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, 
I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. It would be unconventional, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm honored to be included in the negotiation process. You're not just included. You are instrumental. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. I am not the chief engineer of this shuttlecraft. When you look at it logically, yes, it is just a shuttle. No different than any of the others. There is plenty that is different about it, and that is what you are to investigate. But please limit your findings to observable scientific phenomena. We'll try to restrain ourselves. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. One nice thing about Vulcans, Chobok is the only person who didn't look at this and treat me like I was something to pity. Doc says I should get used to it. Doesn't mean I want to be reminded of it every minute of the day. Hey, you won't get pity from me. I think it makes you look tough. As tough as you really are, that is. And that makes you sound pretty smart. I might need you to save me for myself next time, though. <laughs> Come on. Let's get to the bottom of this. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. So... I know about your talk with Miranda. You... you do? She sent me a Priority One dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't gonna work for me. That's not gonna happen, okay? And. Why are you even going there? We haven't even gone on a date yet. I just want you to know where I stand. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, it's wrapping up. 
Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings, and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. I checked every coil on the port and cell for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So, it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Hey. I'm 
I'm not here. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no, but I am glad you came by. No, that's more accurate. <laughs> I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Get y'all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. You got a deal. Be seeing you. It's Lara Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands-on maintenance. I like it. <laughs> Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Same. Warp field inversion and a cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1. 1. 1. 1.2. 1. 1.3. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. Whato? 
The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you've come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Olydians. We are honored to be here, as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad... These you... must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron. The heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. 
Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about Bacobliad? She's not part She can of... speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kobliard, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kobliard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliard suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth. Not your Federation rhetoric. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but it's really not my place to say what the Federation's interests might be. You are their representative. I am. But Ambassador Spock is better suited to address your concerns. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on Tau? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidia? Only be one or the other, not both. If I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation make any other choice? <gasps> this is an outrage. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours! Lydia will not be deterred! We will 
will take back our minds by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I suppose there is some sense to that. I hope we meet again, Jara Rai. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? You've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidian's baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. The Hotari have suffered enough at the hands of the Elidians. I couldn't agree more. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized, reclaimed and restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive, before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. I'm curious why the Elidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines anytime they want. Ability is one thing, courage is another. The Elidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state-of-the-art, but the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Commander Rydeck? I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. I'm glad to hear it. I just hope you're not the only one who feels that way. I apologize for that. These are... Unusual times, to say the least. Much is changing. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. 
We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Why would they do that? I don't know, but that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Of course. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major Sarlet Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You sound skeptical. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives, that it was more than just the storm that somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. 
I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. We need to know more. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? I just don't take it personally. At least I try not to. That's a very mature answer. Shows a positive attitude on your part. Remind me of it when I start complaining to you about the ship's new first officer. Far enough. Transporting the first probe into position.
Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. <sighs> Problem? I'm just not getting any traction with her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. She didn't listen to me when you were out on the hull and I was trying to make it safer for you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of, well, one of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. With two points of data, the Resolute and the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Chovak, sure. I appreciate the advice, Commander. I'll make sure I keep my options open. <laughs> I don't need to tell you how to operate. You're already well on your way. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack-of-all departments like you could be Commander-in-Chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellicoe started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. Maybe I'd just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Mark. There it is again. I saw it. Seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. What are these concentrations? They line up with the interference pattern. 
the storm. And this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, every indication is that the Elidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat. They brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Sidron was very curious when we spoke outside the Queen's chamber. He wanted to know all about us, our ship, the Federation. He wasn't giving any answers. He was looking for them. Well, I'm sure you didn't tell him too much. I don't think the Elidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hotari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Elidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Hotari. Queen's advisor, Tylus, is asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Sidron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. something. I'm sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus! Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. Tylus wouldn't have offered to help if she didn't know what she was doing. That's a lot of faith in someone we barely know. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was.
Tyler suspects this came from the mines on Tau. Hmm. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Olivians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith, which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption and targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. we Will do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to. Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ7 interlock? from the toolbox i don't know what that is not much use for one on a security detail huh carter yeah i'll get it I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Here, I'll help. We've got this. Open up and say ah. Uh... Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Oh, I thought security was the detail to be on. Now all of a sudden you're interested in engineering? Just the engineer. Come on. Start pulling chips. this 
some kind of crystal formation? Whoa. This substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. Some kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on. I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships. Or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. We shouldn't do this alone. We're at the edge of the quadrant. Help isn't just gonna pop over like we're in Sector 001. Wouldn't hurt to try. You talk like you've never had your backs up against a wall before. This is Starfleet. We solve our own problems. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. <sighs> Can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us? Or it's because this is all happening so fast? But she usually doesn't scare easy. Yeah. There was something a little off about her. Like that talk about sending a distress call? That was pretty out there. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now, we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda, too. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. 
If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. Ninety-nine point two percent match. Got it. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over six hundred thousand years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. Actually, I've heard of the Takan. You have? Quite impressive, Commander. Computer? Summarize the Enterprise D's discovery of a Takan outpost. On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D, under the command of Captain Jean Luc Picard, discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating their release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise-D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then-current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet. A barren, rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. 
He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field after Commander William T. Riker of the Away team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. There's only one way to find out. We need to see what's down there for ourselves. I might be able to help with that. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> Commander Rydex right. We need to know what's down there, what the Hotari are hiding, to better understand what we're up against, and to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'm ready for action, Captain. Just say the word and I'll be there. I'll admit, I wish I could go myself. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. It's a risk we have to take. We need to know what we're up against. Agreed. And of course, you'll have the full support of the Resolute throughout. We must take every precaution. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Elidians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty Officers Diaz and Ed Salar, where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Security never checked it in. Miranda never got there? She's the one that had the crystal formation? Yeah. Her and the rest of the security detail from the negotiations. Diaz, Tamaris. Try her again. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on deck five. I'll go find her. Good. I am sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own.
Someone improperly pulled these isolinear chips. It's just you. I'm busy right now. Why don't you come back later? I called you on the comm badge. Twice. Amanda Westbrook, too. Why didn't you answer? Oh. I guess I was just caught up in my work. But I'm through here. So I can't stay in chat. I have other things to do. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. Was someone else messing around in here? There were a bunch of ISOs pulled out on the lower level. And he's here. Or was that you? I didn't see anyone, but I'll report it. A team will come to investigate. Look, I appreciate that you came to check on me, but I'm fine. You worry too much. We're on a starship. Nothing's gonna happen to me here. I'm worried because you're acting strange. I don't know what it is you're really doing in here, but Commander Westbrook said the crystals you took never made it to the containment lab. Will you drop it? I don't like being interrogated, Carter. Hey, wait up! I'm getting some very mixed signals from you right now. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress right now. Just tell Chovak or whoever I don't know where the crystals are and let me go about my business. I know we have some things to figure out. I don't have time to stand around and debate with you. Not right now. I want to help you, but you're not making it easy. Then I'll try to make it simple. You don't have to say anything at all. Miranda, hold on! No. Get out of my way. <laughs> so long, the commander sent us to see what the problem was. Diaz, you were sent here with specific orders, and fighting your crewmate wasn't one of them. What the hell is going on here? Let's just let them explain. I'd like to hear that, because I know what it looks like. There's something seriously wrong with her. She's not herself, I'm telling you. What does that mean? What it doesn't mean anything. Well, for one, she was copying data onto this. This drive is unauthorized. There are ISOs all over the floor. And that's why I was in here, investigating this situation. And when Carter came looking for me, 
We got our wires crossed. It wasn't anything more than that. Check the data on this drive. I'm sure it'll show her access codes were used. And there were probably files copied while I was still with you two in engineering. That makes sense. Then get someone down here who can prove that. But until then, I have to go. I don't know what's going on here, but I think we need to call it into security. She can explain herself in the brig. Hold on a minute. We don't need to put this on anyone's permanent record. Carter said you're not yourself. If something's wrong with you, we should head to sick bay and the doc will fix you right up. Yeah, I... I haven't felt right since I came back from Hotari. I think I should see the doctor. You two know her? If you really think she's not well, we can take her to sick bay first. But what I know is this is a security breach, and we should treat it as such. Please, just let me go see the doctor. She did have a bumpy ride back on the shuttle. Come on, Carter. This is Petty Officer Diaz. I need a security team to Deck 5. This is unbelievable. Rydek here. This is Irma. Any trouble getting to the surface? I'm really starting to miss transporters. As long as this storm is around, you'd better learn to like shuttles. But if you can find the cause of the interference, we might be able to get back to transporting. As if I needed another incentive. We both know there's a lot more than that riding on this. Fair enough. You'll need to get in and out of the mine undetected, so I hope Minister Tylus can help in that regard. So do I. And to keep this covert, we'll refrain from contact unless absolutely necessary. Understood. Rydek out. The ionic interferences Coming from underground, I should find a safer way down there. your shuttle take off. Hopefully no one else did. It's good to see you, even under these unfortunate circumstances. When you called to give us a scan, it sounded like they caught you. I was worried you'd been hurt. It was nothing I couldn't handle. Lead the way. I'll fill you in on what we've learned about the situation. Follow me. The device Galvin and Sidron brought back from the mines is being used to control some sort of warp disruption weapon that has the Resolute trapped in Hotari space. According to our readings, the power source for that device is on this moon, at the specific coordinates I sent you. That sounds impossible, but explains the rumors of the Hotari controlling the Ionic Storm. 
We strongly suspect the device was created by an ancient empire known as the Takan. The Takan? Once the most powerful civilization in the galaxy. But they've been gone for over 600,000 years. It's hard to believe there's something like that on Tau. Which is why I need proof. If we find hard evidence that Galvin and his allies are hiding dangerous Takan technology, I can convince the Federation to let us intervene. Understood. We're almost there. That's the mine? Prospect 614 North, Subdivision 20. It's enormous. Just one of the thousands across town. The pride of Hotari. How do we get inside? The structure that circles the mine has entry points for transporting equipment into the lower levels. They're guarded, but nothing I can't get past using my authority. Well, that's good to hear. As long as you can avoid being seen, I should be able to talk my way past any miner. And provide a little distraction for you in the process. How do I avoid being seen? You don't use the door. How dare you! Don't you know who I am? I... I am Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. Well, that's not... The Queen would be furious to hear you try to deny me entry. But I just... You just... Just what? Just now realize the trouble you've made for yourself? And who exactly do you think you're going to report this to? Because I'll be reporting you as... Because I'll be reporting you as well. To something much further from the lab. You have no authority here. Do you understand who pays your wage? I can inform the Queen directly of this instance. There's no You'll reason. regret everything you've said here today. You should have opened the doors the second I appeared before you. That's not the protocol. I didn't Each know. Each second you delay my entry will be recorded, processed, and permanently marked on the record. Can't believe this. Does your brain function? Do you speak our talk? I have more custom. Okay. Let's get a look inside you. I've reached the end of my patience. Score me to the feet, Spare. system access. Let's see if I can just... Bingo. Better hurry. Not sure how long she can keep him busy. be rigged to only open for registered users. No control panel here. I should take a look with my tricorder. Might control the exit door. No need to see inside it. Something in here is keeping that door closed. Got it. Should remove the security check on the door.
didn't come here to educate an imbecile on royal protocol. Of course not, Minister. So I will be about my business here, and you will take yourself out of my sight. There you are. You really let that guy have it. It worked, didn't it? I'm used to having to throw my weight around. Hard to get anyone to listen to you otherwise. I'm impressed. I didn't know you had it in you. There's a lot you don't know about me. Underestimate me at your peril. The catwalks were booby-trapped. Galvin and Sidron have gone to great lengths to keep out the uninvited. Well, we're inside. Where do you want to start? The ionic interference is coming from below us. We need to go deeper. That lift goes down, at least to the changeover station. But we can't use it without DNA authorization from one of the guards. I have an idea, but... We need a few samples of DNA from the miners who work here. Samples? Fingerprints, sweat, blood. Which will trick the machine and get us control of the lift. That's the theory. Let's test it. Wow, that is a lot of DNA. I should look for the most concentrated spots. This'll work. That's a stable DNA sample. It's only partial, but a few more should do it. Hygiene clearly isn't a priority down here. Use this. Good. That's another I could use. Just need one more sample. Almost looks like coffee. Almost. I'll have some Ractagino when I get back to the ship. Hmm. Leftovers. I should give this a scan. Some kind of glowing mineral being used as a light source. Might want one of these for my cabin, actually. If they eat in here, it's likely there's some DNA in the room. Hotari must be tough on the inside, too. Not concentrated enough. I should try somewhere else. There's gotta be stable DNA here. Perfect. That's enough to make the DNA profile. Time to go back to the lift. You're not coming inside? There are some things I'd rather not smell. Ah.
What's in all these containers? These contain mining supplies, tools, energy packs for machinery. Shouldn't mining supplies be inside the mines? It is troubling. If the workers here aren't mining... It worked. Theory proven. I'll get it started. Ready? I'm a little afraid of what we might find down there. We'll be okay. I've survived worse than this. Well, I haven't. But I'll put my faith in you. For now. Who are you? What are you doing here? You watch your tone with me. I'm Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. I speak for the Queen herself. This is a restricted area. No one gains access without the approval of Galvin or Sidron. Wait. Jewess Gawad Aboincha. <laughs> Let me go. Are you all right? I don't know. Are you injured? No, I, I just... I thought if I could talk my way through like always, I'd be fine, but... I, 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 I'm a diplomat. This isn't what I do. I've never even fired a weapon. This is just... It's real now. I wasn't ready for this. Tylus, you can do this. I don't see what you're basing that on. All you've shown me so far is an iron-willed determination to save your people. I don't expect that's changed. No. No, it hasn't. My authority has never been challenged like that. It meant nothing to him. So we should assume any Hatari we encounter from here on can't be reasoned with. Agreed. The only loyalty they have down here is to Galvin and Sidron. Can you switch over the lift? Guard should have a scan card that will allow us to operate the switch. Got it. He's not dead, is he? He's still one of my people, and I didn't come here to take Otari lives. My phaser's set to stun. He'll be perfectly fine, just unconscious for a while. I see. We don't have that sort of technology on our weapons. Good to know. Energy readings are emanating from this tunnel. It's sure to be guarded in there. Stay low and follow my lead. Is that all dilithium? Not all of it. We excavate large chunks of rock that contain varying amounts of dilithium ore. It's sorted and processed at the collector ship above.
More guards. I take that as a sign we're getting close. I'll get a closer look. Looks like they've improvised a barrier. Yes, we must be getting closer. We need that particular card, don't we? I'm afraid so. We don't have time to wait for them to finish whatever they're doing. We'll have to try to keep low and sneak past them. I'm starting to see the utility of a phaser. I wouldn't stand a chance against all three of them. Can you open that door? Not without that scan card. I don't like our options here. I have to get us that card so we can open the door. How? If they detect you, Galvin and Sidron's followers are clearly willing to kill to protect whatever is in this mine. Hey, I'm trained for this. I'll be fine. What should I do? Avoid being seen. Stick to the edge of the room and meet me at the door. Intruder. Must be seeing things. Almost done here. What's that? I wish the Lumidians would try something else. They saw our power, our resolve. They're terrified of us. Until the plan is complete, we're vulnerable. Then get back to work, and we'll complete the plan more quickly. I wish the audience would come good. back. I need the target practice. What? I was mistaken. I can taste our victory.
Stay close. Stop! What? Motion sensors. They'll trigger an alarm. We'll be found. Invisible to the naked eye. They could be anywhere. How will we get through? It's where the uprising started. Hotari, don't do this. We defend ourselves, but we don't kill on this scale, this level of savagery. There's no such thing as a bloodless rebellion. I don't know if we should keep going. So much death. I don't want to end up like them. We'll make sure they didn't die for nothing. What we learned here could save the rest of your people. Okay. Okay. Whatever happened here, it made the Illidians abandon the mines. Let's find out what they're so scared of. Otari and Elidian, both sides, took a beating. Is this the effects of an Elidian disruptor? Yes. Disruptors are cruel weapons. The Hotari fortified the side of the room opposite the door. It's a good tactic, but a few crates aren't going to stop fully armed Elidian soldiers. How did they win? From the blast marks, it looks like the Elidians had far greater firepower.
footprints. Elidian boots. Running back the way we came. Tylus. What? What kind of weapon did this? This is like nothing I've ever seen or heard of. M my people don't have a weapon that does this. What else can you tell me? What an awful way to die. This must be why the Elidians are so afraid. Technology that surpasses their own, in the hands of the Hotari that they've lorded over for centuries. Where did this weapon come from? Well, the crystals are giving off tetrametric pulses. If I set my tricorder to search for that frequency, it'll lead us right to the source. This makeshift barrier forced the Elidians to enter from the service corridor, creating a choke point. Quite the advanced tactic for a species that's never waged war. The Elidians shot to kill. But if they killed him, why was he shot in the back? Huh, you're right. The shot came from the side the Hatari were defending. We don't kill our own. And he wasn't just caught in the middle. Killed by the same crystallization as the Elidian. Whose side was the killer on? Silas, you may not want to look down there. I've come too far to... What is this? They've been dumping bodies down here. Uh... <sighs> Unforgivable. Galvin and Citron will be made to answer for this. More of these crystals. Another of my people dead. Tylus, what is this machine? It's for tunnel boring. The cone on the front is covered in disruptors that allow it to melt through the solid rock. They don't seem to have finished the tunnel. Why stop here, I wonder?
Think they parked this here on purpose? One way to find out. Need any help? I've got it. This concentration of tetrametric radiation has never been recorded. Whatever they're hiding, it's right through here. This feels strange. The crystals are increasing, growing outward, replacing the soil. It's like an infection, a parasite, growing inside Tau. Incredible. This is definitely not Hotari. It's the remnants of the Takan Empire. I don't think we should be here. This is exactly where we should be. Every strange thing we've seen in this system, it might all come from this room. We need to learn everything we can. How are you holding up? I knew Galvin and Citron were dangerous. Now I know they're more powerful than I could have imagined. But the worst of it is knowing they got there by turning our people against their own. Somewhat resembles a transporter pad. Look familiar? It's almost identical to the console Galvin has hidden in the palace. It looks like a control surface. What are we looking at? It's made of the same crystalline material as the rest of this place. But I can't tell much else. It might be some kind of sleep mode. I can't analyze this further unless it starts working normally. Maybe we can turn it on from somewhere else. Hopefully. Let's keep looking around. Can your device read this? It can roughly translate the words, but we don't have enough Taconian language on record to understand how it's structured. Oh well. Looks like some sort of replicator. Hmm. I can't get it to work. It has power. 
Must be looking for some other kind of authorization. The device's primary function is to transmute lithium into this quantized crystalline compound. Possibly for the creation of weapons. Do you think one of these was used on that Elydian in the tunnels? Such a cruel weapon. This suggests there's some type of complex life form contained within each crystal. Life form? There's something alive in these tiny crystals? That's what it says, but hard to imagine how that's possible. Our science division will have a field day with this. We need to study it on the ship. Is it too, um, convenient that we found this place unguarded? There's an old Earth saying about never looking a gift horse in the mouth. What's a horse? Never mind. Crystallized lithium compound. Its internal structure is extremely ordered. In fact, the states of these crystals on a subatomic level suggests a storage device of some kind. Energy levels are both stable and ordered, like information. Some of them appear to be depleted. What kind of information would you deplete?
I see it. What's happening? Someone turned it on. There's no one here. But maybe the device I saw in the palace can send a signal? If that's the case, we may not be alone for long. Let's hurry. This can't be right. It's putting out almost 50 zettajoules of energy. I assume that's a lot? Enough to power this entire quadrant. This amount of power, the, the kind of radiation it's putting out, it's... It's the cause of the storm. The warp disrupting beam, all of it. What do we do now? We get back to the Resolute. They have to know about this. Come on, let's... Quickly. We have to hide. I demand you let me go! No need to complain. You're about to receive a gift beyond your wildest imagination. If anything, I consider it an honor. What is that? What are you doing? You'll see. Soon enough. I, I can influence the course of the negotiations. I can make sure the Hotari get the better end of the bargain. So can I.